So when we talk about inventory, we also have um, interest in, in independent versus dependent demand and how to hold inventory for those two different types. For all of the models that we talk about in Chapter 12, we're going to be focusing on independent demand, which is the demand for the item is independent of the demand for any other item. Dependent demand, on the other hand, is if demand is dependent upon demand for some other item in the inventory. So can you come up with some good examples for independent versus dependent? So for, for dependent demand, um, where it does rely on something else, it could be something like if I'm selling um, uh, video game consoles, I don't know how many people still do that with all the online stuff nowadays, um, then we also would need to sell games and or extra controllers, assuming you have a friend that's going to come over to your house, etc. Um, that would be a dependent demand. So the controllers are dependent upon the actual console being sold, or the games are dependent upon the um, console being sold. Independent is, it doesn't matter what else is going on out there. There's, that's just what we're doing. So that's what we're going to focus on is independent demand. They're also uh, interested in the costs that go with each of this stuff. There's holding cost, ordering cost, and setup cost. Holding cost we've seen before is the cost of holding or carrying inventory over time. So holding it until the next time period. Ordering cost is the cost of placing an order and receiving goods. Setup cost, that's usually more in the, in the manufacturing setting to prepare a machine or process for manufacturing an order. In the models we look at, we're going to lump ordering and setup cost together and call them setup basically. So we're going to lump those two together. Yes, they could be separate, but for our purposes, um, that's all we're going to do. So really, Chapter 12 comes down to two big questions we want answered. Number one, when should I order or reorder? And number two, how much should I order or reorder? So we're going to look at different models to help us understand or answer these questions. So first, we're going to look at deterministic models for independent demand. So remember, deterministic means there's no variability at all. There's no probabilities, no statistics going in. Deterministic means it's determined or fixed. So we're going to look at three different deterministic models, the EOQ, economic order quantity model, the POQ, production order quantity model, and three, the quantity discount model. So let's start off by looking at the EOQ. There are six assumptions really five, the sixth one kind of comes from the other five, assumptions that go into the EOQ, economic order quantity model. Number one, demand is known, constant, and independent. So you should be fine with independent. I just told you that. Known, okay, I just said it was deterministic, so you should be okay with that. And constant means that it's the same, you sell the same amount every single time period, every day, for example. Lead time is known and constant. Lead time is the amount of time from when I place the order to when I receive it all. Uh, that and in this case we're meaning this means that we have really good suppliers. Uh, number three, receipt of inventory is instantaneous and complete. I like to think of this simply as everything comes in on the same truck. Assumption number four, quantity discounts are not possible. Uh, we'll relax this assumption when we look at the quantity discount model. Assumption number five, only variable costs are the setup and holding. So again, we're lumping ordering and setup together, and then. Assumption number six, stockouts can be completely avoided. Well, I hope number six is possible based on the first five assumptions. So what does inventory usage look like over time for an EOQ model? We start at some maximum quantity, Q, and it goes down at a nice smooth rate because demand is known and constant, meaning linear, until we get down to zero. The minimum inventory will never have a stock out, assumption number six. And then we'll order more at some point, probably before we run out for some lead time. And then it'll jump all the way back up and go down, jump all the way back up, go down. So it looks like a sawtooth. Right? And it'll continue to do that over time. We can see that the average inventory on hand is Q over two. You can either figure that out mathematically or by looking at the picture and counting how many triangles there are if we have a little rectangle here. All right, some people are more visual than looking at Q minus, 
zero divided by how many points there are. Either way, q over two. Right? And that's important. We'll come back to where we're going to see q over two in a little bit. So we want to minimize the total cost. So there are two costs, we said, holding cost curve, which we're assuming is linear here, as we see in this nice green line. And then we see the setup cost. We do see that there, it is not linear. There's some returns um, that we get by ordering in, in a larger quantity. And then we add those two together. And of course, because we're adding nonlinear and linear, we're going to get a nonlinear. And so this is the total cost curve. And then we're finding the minimum, which looks like it's in this area here. And we see that yes, it is. And it looks like it crosses where these two are equal. In fact, it does. So the minimum total cost will be the, where the holding cost and the setup cost are exactly equal. Uh, and we can see where the optimal order quantity is going to be. We're going to call it Q star. And then we see the minimum total cost off and over here where it's the annual cost. So for the EOQ model, Q is the number of pieces per order. Q star is the optimal number of pieces to order or is the EOQ. Big D, annual demand and units of the for the inventory item. Big S, setup or ordering cost. Again, we're lumping those together. H is the holding or carrying cost. Same thing for each unit. unit. So annual setup cost is the number of orders placed per year times the setup cost per year. So the annual demand divided by number of units in each order is how many times we have to place an order. So it'll be D divided by Q times setup S. So that is our setup cost. That was the nonlinear one. Now we need to also look at the holding cost, which is the average inventory level, which we said was Q over two, times the holding cost per unit per year. So it'll be Q over two times H. So we have the two cost. We then set those two equal to each other and solve for Q, which we will then call Q star. So doing some simple algebra, we see that Q star becomes the square root of 2 times the annual demand times the setup divided by the holding cost. So let's look at an example. We are selling painless hypodermic needles. Yes, there's no such thing. The annual demand is 1,000 units per year. Well, because there are no such thing as painless hypodermic needles, there's probably there's only 1,000 for demand. We're trying to sell them to the hospitals. The setup cost is 10 bucks per order. The holding cost is 50 cents per unit per year. So now we have everything we need to find Q star. It'll be 2 times D, which is 1,000, times S, which is 10. So now we're up to 20,000. Divide by H. 20,000 divided by a half is the same as 20,000 times 2. So we're at 40,000. Take the square root of 40,000. All right. And we get 200 units. Yes, those numbers were picked so that we get a nice round number. Right. So the optimal number of needles to order every time is 200 units. Now, we could go on and do other things like how many times per year do I need to make an order? So we could say annual demand. 1,000 divided by 200, we get five times that we order per year. Right? The other thing we might be interested in is the time between orders. In order to do that, we need to know how many working days there are in a year. So let's say 250. That's 50 weeks times five days a week. Right? I'll give you two weeks off for vacation. I'll give you the weekends. So 250 days. In a working year, uh, so we get 250 divided by the number of times we order five, so 50 working days between orders. So 10 weeks if there's five working days in a in a week. And then finally, we also are very interested in the total cost. So the total cost is the setup cost plus the holding cost, which we had calculated back in those blue squares a while back, and we see that the Setup cost is 50 bucks, and the holding cost is 50 bucks for a total cost of $100. Is it always going to be true that the $50 and the $50 are going to be equal to each other? The holding cost and the setup cost are going to be equal. For the EOQ model, yes, because we are setting the two equal to each other to find Q star. So they had better be equal. 
if you get different numbers for the total cost for the setup versus the holding, then you've done something horribly wrong and you should repent.